Welcome to a special Father's Day edition of RPM Tonight. Gather up the family because we're about to go racing. The Cup drivers fired up their engines at Michigan. Some got carried away with the part about firing up. The points race heated up because the leader met the wall. F1's leading driver was reintroduced to his homeland. What type of welcome would Jacques Villeneuve get on the streets of Montreal? Plus, we'll go racing round the clock in 24 hours of Le Mans. Could this finally be Mario's year? The road ahead is sometimes filled with bumps. 10 and 2 on the wheel. Pay attention. We've got racing tape to burn, including cars burning. Father's Day, you can just let the chicken burn on the barbecue because we got a half hour of racing and call it Cajun later. 24 hours of Le Mans and F1 coming up soon, but we'll start in Michigan with the Miller 400 where Jeff Gordon began the day sucking exhaust. Back of the pack start for Jeff Gordon, and that's not some new NASCAR rule designed to equalize things like the way the specs are changed from time to time. Instead, Gordon was sent to the rear because of his use of a backup car due to a practice run wreck on Saturday. True story. There's Ward Burton. He crashed in happy hour playing with the kids, so he had to go to the rear of the field. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, Dick Trickle all in back, and they're racing. The green flag drops. There's trouble on lap eight. Mike Skinner and Jeff Bodine got into each other, then Skinner into the wall, then Skinner on fire. And Skinner completely on fire. Scary thing. Mr. Wizard, I don't want to be a race car driver anymore. Crew gets over there and douses the thing, then he gets out of the car, Bodine drives by, and Skinner says something to the effect of, I hate you, you're the worst driver in the world! Lap 60, Terry Labonte finds the worst wall in the world, turn one. Stale milk on cornflake. Start of the day, tied for the points lead, but he slides down through the infield. Labonte behind the wall. He would later re-enter the race, but finished 39th, only his third non-top 10 this season, so a rough one for Terry Labonte. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon on the move. Gordon passes teammate Ricky Craven for six. Gordon, remember, started 40th. More jockeying up ahead of him. Another lead change in the Miller 400. Mark Martin back out in front, but here comes Bill Elliott. A couple of Jack Rouse's cars go at it in turn one. It is Mark Martin on the move for this time. Give the edge to Irvin. He takes the lead of the Miller 400 in turn three. 26 lead changes in this race. 40 to go. Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt, they come together. They bump. Not so drastic results what happened at Daytona. Gordon to the inside, and he takes the spot away from Earnhardt 10 laps later. Gordon ended up fifth in the race. You heard the call earlier of Ernie Irvin taking the lead from Bill Elliott. Irvin's final pit stop, 23 laps to go. Right side tires, one can of fuel. He didn't have a coupon. Keeps the lead over Elliott. Costly mistake for Rusty Wallace. He's given a stop and go for just a vague speed limit. He also didn't signal. Wallace finished 29, three laps down. Meanwhile, Tim Irvin, the wife of Ernie Irvin, realizing the poetic justice of seeing her husband in front on the lead. At Michigan, the crew chief, Mark Reno, doubts his Gatorade, his first win as Ernie Irvin's crew chief, and it's Ernie Irvin in front in the middle of 400, his first win of the season, and he pulled it off on the same track that nearly cost him his life back in 1994. Bill Elliott, he ran second. Mark Martin was third. That's the eighth straight top five finish for him. Ted Musgrave was fourth, so four fours up front. And then the Chevy and Jeff Gordon is seventh top five in the last eight races. And this one for the points lead. Now to the winner with our man Bill Weber. Well, in victory lane with Ernie Irvin, an exciting and emotional win for you. Do you want to talk about your car, your crew, or your engine builder first? All three. Um, you know, it's, everybody did a great job. You know, Doug Yates doesn't get a lot of credit for um, doing all the engines. You know, Robert's got so busy, um, he's been, have to been able to rely on Doug. And, and Doug works a phenomenal amount of hours. And, you know, his, this win is all him because, you know, without that much power, it was going to be hard to win. Your final pit stop, 8.2 seconds for a couple of tires and some fuel. Well, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, that, that was the, the thing that won the race for us. And, um, you know, we had a great race car, but again, you know, you have to have the whole package. Some of the greatest names in NASCAR have had some of their greatest moments in this victory lane. Is this yours? Well, 
there's there's no doubt that um you know this is a win that is is very emotional and um you know i remember being here you know like three years ago and um but i don't remember being here on sunday and um you know this is a, a great time and um being able to be here and um, it was a pretty emotional win just uh you know because of all the thoughts of what's going on certainly a big day for ernie urban one he and everyone here today will never forget ernie urban wins at michigan all right, thanks, Bill. Irvin has shown no fear of this Michigan track since that terrible accident. Three runs at Michigan since the crash. He's never missed the top five, and he capped off Sunday with a win. His first at this track. On now to the others, starting with the runner-up. I'm tickled to death. A year ago, I was watching it on television, and it's just great to be here and compete and run like we run. We've run good a lot of races. I mean, it's just one of our, our best. We came so close, but... Hey, we'll get them next week. Uh, just tight all day. We missed uh, the chassis set up some and uh, just could never get it adjusted. You know, we got it pretty decent at times, but uh, just wasn't good enough to contend. I mean, engine shop's making awesome horsepower, and when you make a lot of power, things things may happen. And uh, seemed like the same thing happened to me last week. Uh, car was running good. I'm just sickle pink, man. I'm smiling. We're running up front, and uh, hey, we're gonna take this car to California. We'll be ready for him. We let a lot of laughs. We showed them we're, we're, what we're made out of. We just need to keep getting these runs, and uh, look out, California. Dale Jarrett ended up sixth in Sunday's race, and Dale Earnhardt, his winless streak is now at 41. That's an all-time high for him, or low. Derek Cope was eighth, Bobby Labonte was ninth, and Johnny Benson ended up in tenth. A most unusual thing happened Sunday at Michigan. Frosted flakes, not corn flakes for Terry Labonte, and he didn't finish very high. 39th, a loss of the points lead after a scrape with the wall. We were awful good. I was real happy with the car. It was off just a little bit at the start, and... Uh... The second set of tires there, we only got to run a few laps, but it felt like it was going to be good. Then we had the problem, so just a tough break. 39th place finish Sunday was among the worst for Terry Labonte since 1990. If it seems he's almost always finishing up front, it's because he usually does. Even with Sunday's run, he's been in the top 10 in 11 of his last 14 events and 17 of 21 going back to last season. Things look sour for Jeff Gordon on Saturday. Here's the wreck. He caused a practice wreck to send him, Jeff Burton, and Dick Trickle all piled up into the back of the field and back up cars for Sunday's race. Jeff Burton ran well to be 14, driving through some pain. And Gordon, he was fifth. And once again, Jeff Gordon in the 24 is back on top of the points. To come out here with a top five, man, that's a, that's a great run, a great finish, and a great effort by this team. They did an awesome job, I tell you. Uh, you know, they worked hard to get that backup car ready. We never gave up, and, and we were uh, able to, to you know, get that thing up there and uh, have a good finish. My pain was bothering me pretty bad, and it was affecting the way the car was running. I uh, finally got some stuff changed on the seat, came in, made some changes there. That helped a lot. I got my little, little uh, electronic thing turned up some, and that helped. Um, and then it got better, progressively got better. And so the points go like this after 14 of 32 events. Jeff Gordon back on top. Mark Martin second, 46 points off the lead. Looking for his first cup title. Last year's champ, Terry Labonte, fell back to third after a rough run on Sunday. Dale Jarrett remains in fourth, and Jeff Burton stands in fifth. Dale Earnhardt still in sixth. Bobby Labonte, Ricky Rudd, and Michael Waltrip kept their places. Bill Elliott moved back into the top ten. He bounced out Jeremy Mayfield. I don't believe Canadians are so upset as to cross the border and claim North Dakota or anything, but imagine the disappointment when their native driver, Jack Villeneuve, lasted just two laps in Sunday's Grand Prix of Canada, and Villeneuve's run was even worse considering the Canadian discount. Thank you. There he is, Jack, in his nose pinch for some reason. We don't exactly know why. Right after the start, out of turn one, there's trouble. Big trouble. Mika Hockenden loses it. Eddie Irvine rolls over the tail of... Mika Hocken and we have broken cars. End of lap two. Here's Bill New. Oh, and it's not good. Jock takes the turn a little hot, locks it up, and he's done. Out of the race. Jock Bill New, the hometown guy, all over. Not gonna win this thing. Lap 14, more problems. Ralph Schumacher, brother of Mike, locks it up. And he's into the go-kart track tire. His day done also. Ralph's brother doing a little better. Michael Schumacher had the pull and he's flying up on the lead in this race. Battle for third and fourth. Now on board with John Lacey in fourth. Giancarlo Fischichella running third, and he's going after him. Lap 27, the leader, Michael Schumacher, into the pits for fuel and tires. A lot of guy working on that vehicle. That puts David Coulthard into the lead. You're on board now with Hein Carroll Prince and Prince, and coming up on Alexander Wurz, who is in for Gerhard Berger, who has sinus trouble, and it's Wurz going slow, and Prince and passing him. Coulthard extending his lead 
Coulthard builds a sizable lead over second place Michael Schumacher, but he is yet to pitch. Coulthard, I speak of, back on board with Frenton. This time he almost loses it, rides over the curb, but rides himself. Lap 40, great shooter Coulthard in a one-stop strategy. He goes into the pits, and now that puts Michael Schumacher back in front, going off the course, but back on late in the race. Johnny Herbert, who's been running fifth, has to serve a 10-second penalty for speeding, sort of like Rusty Wallace. A few laps later, the race leader, Michael Schumacher, goes in for his second scheduled pit. That puts Coulthard back on the lead. What he hoped would be the rest of the race, but on lap 50, second place Schumacher having some tire problems, blistering problems. If you look close, they still can't see it, but he was having them anyway. He gets passed by Olivier Pani, who's a lap down. So lap 51, Schumacher realizes his problems with the tires. He heads into the pit, swerving down pit road. This puts him 32 seconds behind the leader, Coulthard, and it looks like Schumacher is not going to get it done, unlike Smoke Meat getting it done in Montreal. Lap 53, Coulthard having the same problems with his tires. The big lead, Coulthard, heads to the pits, gets the tires changed. Now he's going to rev it up and gun it, and he's not going to go anywhere. He's killed the car. they got to push it. They don't have a hill to jump start it. They finally get that beast going, but it proves disastrous because on lap 54, Olivier Pani, out of control, hits the wall across the track, suffered a broken leg out of that. Alain Prost looking on, concerned for his driver. Bunny carried out of the car with the broken leg. Me, I would have used a stretcher. The race has stopped after 56 of the 69 laps. Make that, yes, 56. They, they called it a day because it wouldn't have fit in under the two-hour time limit. And it's Michael Schumacher in front, second win of the season and the 24th of his career. He moves into the lead in the season standing. John Alacy finished second. His only F1 win came on this track two years ago. Ricky Callow was third. Bill News teammate Heinz Hill Prince, he was next. Then Johnny Herbert in the five spot. The bottom five of the top ten, Shinji Nakano. Hi, he got in there. He got a point. That's unusual. Cool start next. Denise, the defending series and race camp. Damon Hill was ninth. And then Gianni Morbidelli, he ended up tenth. Now let's hear from the winner. We both had the same problem. It uh, would have been the case, or matter who uh, took mostly care of his tyres towards the end, made them attack. Uh, it depends very much, because this last set of tyres, I don't know whether this would have lasted to the end. Uh, the same uh, probably for David. Obviously very disappointed to have held the lead and then to have had the problem at the pit stop and lose it, and then of course finish out of the points. I couldn't uh, carry on, unfortunately, because I was on position six. Uh, I think my strategy was not too bad. I tried to save everything, uh, like brakes and so on. And I would imagine that some guys uh, get some problems in the end. And, but unfortunately, this happens. And I'm very sad because it would have been a great debut. All right, it doesn't always work out this way, but the pull for the Grand Prix of Canada is meaningful. Schumacher won this time from the pole. Damon Hill did it last year. In fact, the only guy in the last five races not to win from the pole was Schumacher back in 1995. Jacques Villeneuve did not win from the pole. He didn't win the race. He just crashed. He did speak, though, briefly. I went into the corner a little bit too fast, made a mistake. It just happened. We finished, which is really what we'd hoped we'd do. Um, and I think that the, the, the evidence is there that if, if we had um, not, if we qualified a bit better and got a better uh, start, then I think we could have finished the points quite easily. Today didn't work. I mean, it worked uh, until Saturday. It was fine. I mean, everything we, we had, it was great. But no, it was uh, today, Sunday, didn't work fine. All right, Villeneuve not only didn't speak very long, but he didn't speak in French. He violated some kind of Montreal rule. Michael Schumacher into the points lead. It's called Drivers' Championship standings in this league. He's got seven points to spare in Jacques Villeneuve. Olivier Pani is in third, then Eddie Irvine in fourth. A tie for fifth between Heinz Harold Princeton and Jean Alesi. Funny cars and all other manner of NHRA dragsters will be seen soon on RPM. We're headed to Ohio in a bit for the quarters. And there's other racing news coming. The 24 hours of Le Mans coming right up. So we need to warn our affiliates we'll be going along and we'll be showing lots of fire. And there's Trans Am racing right around the corner. How can we make any Father's Day better? RPM Tonight is brought to you by Motel 6. The new Motel 6 is renovating across America. Call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6 for reservations. Trans Am racing, as indicated. Paul Gentilosi, the pole sitter, all hyped and ready to go. And they're racing. Gentilosi gets the jump with the star. He's in front. And the green flag and the word start means they're going. Tom Kendall in second. The leader Gentilosi has motor problems. And 
Kendall flying by and in the lead like Kendall is, he's not going fast. Now the last lap, Don Sutton on fire. Right in front of the leaders, Kendall slows down, no caution. Dorsey Schrader closing in. Fire truck doing its work the last corner. Schrader right on Kendall's bumper with Tommy Kendall. Holding off Schrader, gets the checkered flag, and it's Tommy Kendall winning his fifth straight Grand Zam race. So I'd say that would put him in the points lead. Well, he was already there. Points go like this, Tommy Kendall in front of Brian Simo by 56 is tightly bunched after that. Pickett, Gooding, and Schrader, they are third, fourth, and fifth. Michael Andretti was hoping to give Dad Mario a special Father's Day gift by teaming up with old Dad to give him a win in about the only big race he'd never won, 24 Hours of Le Mans. Instead, Pops had to settle for working on a car engine with his son. That won't win a race, but it did provide atmosphere for bonding. And here we go to the 24 Hours of Le Mans overnight. Headlights going, it's dark, they're tired. It's a long race. Early in the morning, the leader, Bob Wolick, 24, 25 factory owned Porsche spinning out. The big Aries out of the race. Wolick, 27 tries, no win. Here are the Andretti's, pretty much parting out their vehicle. They had to stop nine hours early. Not gonna get the win this time. Great story in the GT2 class. 78 Porsche, Michele Neugarten. He has no tire. He's driving on pretty much nothing, just, just steel. The team had the lead at this point, going quite slow now. They had to work this thing out there, trying anything that would work, flyers, whatever. Guys pushing it. They did rally and ended up winning their class. The battle for the overall lead. The seven Porsche, Tom Christensen, passing the leader, Ralph Kellners. You get the lead on the last lap. Now time winding down, Kellners on fire. So the factory on Porsches out of the race. Crushing blow to Chief Engineer Norbert Singer. Because he had to watch on TV. The big screen showed the same thing. The Le Mans Barbecue Weekend continued. The 39 McLaren BMW, Gilbert Scott, big fireball there. Scott out of it and okay. More spark. 62 Dodge Viper catches fire. The driver here also okay. Good hustle to get out. This here is Justin Bell, son of Derek, our commentator. He flew up in the 63 car. Justin driving at the end. Did finish the race. That's so found Johansson in the lead car. Pulled a back muscle, had to had to get uh, some therapy or something here toward the end of the race. But his team did win this thing. Reinhold Yost, the team leader, winning the 24-hour Le Mans for the second straight year. And they get a lay or something, although they're not in Hawaii. 15th Porsche title, winner average of buck 26 and change. 360 laps completed over the 8.456 mile circuit. I'm pretty much reading this, huh? Only 17 of 48 starters finished the race. Stay around, there's more. More from Michigan, in fact, the number 400. We'll get into the subject of losing and gaining confidence. It plays a part in what a driver does the next week. Fought for injury in a back-of-the-pack starting spot to end up in 14. Ricky Craven started third. He was near the front for a good part of the race, but fell back to the 18th. And Wally Dallenbach closes out the top 20. He was one lap down in the end. Winning and losing next week depends a lot sometimes on what a guy does this week or a girl, except there are no girls in the Winston Cup race on Sunday. It's about confidence. Some guys lose it, and that leads to losing again. Some guys gain it, and it jump starts them for the next race. We're confident. Bill Weber will tell the story well. Confidence is critical if you want to be successful in racing, whether you're number one in points or number 41. You build on it every weekend. It starts in qualifying on Friday, continues through practice on Saturday, but ultimately your confidence is tested on the track on Sunday afternoon. In the Miller 400 at Michigan, it was a confidence building run for a lot of different drivers for a lot of different reasons. We have a great race team here, and um, you know, when Larry McReynolds left last year, um, everybody thought that, that was gonna be the end of Robert Yates racing as, as far as what they knew. And um, you know, that didn't really hinder us at all. And um, you know, it's great. Mark Reno has come aboard and um, uh, him and Robert really worked good together, and myself. And I guess it would have been a lot more of a confidence builder, except that I felt we probably should have been here a couple times already this year. Uh, we probably couldn't have got much closer than we did at Dover and ran into some oil and with 20-some-odd laps to go. We don't ever want to get down on uh, ourselves and lose confidence, and we don't want anybody else to ever think that they're, you know, getting to our confidence. And uh, I think today pretty much showed just how, how well this team is performing, and how well they're communicating, and how much effort's being put out there, and you're not going to break this confidence. Well, we've had confidence since Daytona. We've had a little bit of ups and downs, but I think this team's going. We're going. Now, leaving Michigan with a lot of confidence could be doubly important because the next stop is California, and that track looks like and should race like this one. 
All right, thanks, Bill. Make no mistake, we like the Wallace clan. They're good people to lay around on hammocks and talk racing all afternoon. But the recent performances are lacking. In the last three events, none of the three drivers have made even the top 20. Get another try next week in California. Stay with us for the quarter. Joe Amato and her son is the top fuel top guy. All the NHRA fun coming up soon. But first, the question. The best buy question. What year did Joe Amato get his only Pontiac type of Nationals win? We'll tell you soon. Only Pontiac Excitement Nationals winner we're including Sunday's race. We're not going to give away five before Sunday's race, 1989. He beat Hockey Ender, also known as Hank. I added an E as a typographical error. Hank, not Hockey, who probably raced in the uh, 24 hours of Le Mans. Amato was runner up in this event four times. All right, the race. NHRA, Pro Stock Bike, and away they go. Matt Hines, points leader against John Myers, and Matt Hines on his bike up in time. Wins this thing. They don't use parachutes on the bike. Pro Stock, Tom Martino against Troy Coughlin, and they're racing. And it's Martino getting it done in front and red. He wins this thing easily. The top fuel we go. Gary Selzy against Tony Schmacher. Selzy out early and also out late. Winning this thing, smoking it. Setting up flames, parachutes working, and Selzy in front. The crew is much pleased. Funny car, they're hysterical. Tom Hoover and Whit Baysmore, and they're off, and it's Hoover cleaning up. The NHRA standings go like this after 10 events. It's Gary Selzy in a points lead, which I will now talk to you about. Selzy, of course, has a 194-point lead on Joe Amato in top fuel. John Ford still leading his funny car, but Whit Baysmore takes over the second spot. Jim Yates and Matt Hines, they'll, they still lead in pro stock and pro stock bikes. We are coming right back, because if we left right now, they'd fire us. 